Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm gonna teach you how to turn Photoshop into a game of craps. And it's a lot of fun because the results you get are both inspiring and random, but it'll get you thinking about things in a different way that you're not quite used to in Photoshop. So if you're ready to do this, I'm gonna teach you how to play craps Photoshop style. So today I'm going to teach you how to turn Photoshop into a game of craps. Now for many of you, going into Photoshop might be a crap shoot anyway. Oh, that's terrible. So to turn Photoshop into a craps game, you don't need a whole lot. All right, what all you really need are the actions that I'm going to share with you. There'll be a in the card, you can get a download through the card or in the description below if you're here on YouTube. If you're on my website, F64 Academy, there will be a button somewhere where you can download both the rules for craps and also the actions. And then you just need a set of dice. You only need two of them, really. You can do what I did and buy a metric ton of them off of Amazon. Or you can borrow them from your children's favorite game. What's that over there? Hmm? Or not quite as fun as the last one. There's actually an app for that. We're going to use the app. Optionally, you'll need a one minute timer if you want to set that challenge for yourself. If you don't want to set that challenge for yourself, you don't necessarily need the one minute timer. I've got a sand timer. You can also use your phone. So all you really need are the actions I'm going to provide for you, the rules, and some way to roll some dice. Okay, and then it's pretty simple. The rules are really straightforward and really easy. I've got two different types of games that you can play with craps. One is a basic form of craps and another one's more advanced where every round has a different thing that's gonna happen with your role. Now you can do this solo play by yourself or you can do it multiplayer. You can play in the same room as somebody else or you can play online. Uh, like right now during this uh, coronavirus pandemic, it's a great opportunity to hop in a Zoom call with one of your friends, share a photo and play Photoshop craps with them and share the results when you're done. It's actually pretty fun to do it that way. But what I found is even with the solo play of craps in Photoshop, I'm coming up with some really interesting results and challenging myself to do things that I wouldn't normally do. So I'm gonna give you a set of actions that comes with this. It's a .atn file. To install it, all you gotta do is double click it or drag it and drop it into Photoshop and then go to your actions palette by pressing Alt and F9 and that will bring up the actions palette. What you're gonna see here is a set of adjustment layers two through 12. So basically what happens is every time you roll the dice, you're going to choose the action that corresponds to the dice roll. So if you roll a six, you're going to use color balance. All you got to do is press play on that action and it will pop on top of your layer here already set up for you. Now these, all of these adjustment layers don't have anything really done with them with the exception of the gradient and the gradient map because you kind of have to do something with those. Uh, so basically the way this works is you get a blank adjustment layer and you have to modify that adjustment layer. Now you can do whatever you want to this adjustment layer. You can adjust the opacity. You can adjust the fill. You can adjust the blend mode. You can adjust blend if you can even mask it. But the thing is, is that as soon as you roll the next set of dice, you can't touch that layer again until the very end. Okay. And there's, there's some rules on that one. What this does is it challenges you to think about a build up process while you're working on your images. So you don't want to go too heavy handed with each one of these layers. You want them to build up slowly and casually. So you're going to do that using blend modes, blend if opacity and fill. Are you ready to watch me play? I'm going to play this by myself right here real quick. I'm going to go, let's say seven rounds. Okay. So one of the things that I've done with this photo that kind of sets you up for the, the editing process is you're going to want to make sure that when you are in Adobe camera or Lightroom, you pick a setting that's going to basically expand the dynamic range of your image. The best images to use for this are actually ones that look like a mild type of HDR or tone mapped image, because we're going to be opening up shadows and closing down shadows with these adjustment layers as we play Photoshop crap. So if you look up here, you can see my histogram is pretty even. Uh, there's nothing that's really standing out as far as highlights or shadows are concerned. I didn't do any uh, effect based editing here. It's really just a baseline photo. Okay, so I'm going to press OK and open this up in Photoshop here to play craps. So I'm going to go seven rounds here. Let's do the first roll. The first roll looks like it's going to be an 11, which means I'm going to be using the selective color adjustment layer. I'll just press play on that selective color adjustment layer. And now I get to do all the properties of that selective color adjustment layer right here. And then after that, I can use blend modes, blend if, or uh, opacity or fill, or even uh, a mask if I want to. So with selective color, um, pretty much what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to modify my colors here to get my colors looking good. Okay. So these are my reds. So I can really amp up those reds a little bit here and then make, make them a little bit darker. That looks good. So I'm basically controlling the tones of my colors here and really 
kind of controlling how the reds are going to come across. Now I'll move into the yellows, uh, maybe add a little bit more yellow to those yellows, and then maybe add some magenta to those yellows, and maybe remove some of that cyan a little bit, and maybe make them a little bit darker. Okay, I'm not going to do all of these because we'll be here all day. So I'm going to go into the blues. I might add a little bit more cyan to those blues back there because I like what that's doing. Maybe a little bit of magenta. And maybe darken them up a little bit there to draw the eye to that dark patch of blue back there and remove some of the yellow from there so the blue kind of becomes more prominent. Now, one of the things that when it comes to this Photoshop craps, you're going to have to know a little bit about Photoshop to play this, but it also gives you the opportunity to experiment a lot. OK, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the blend mode here to color because I don't want it to affect the luminance of my colors. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll change it back to normal. Uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just drop that opacity just a little bit because, again, this is going to be a build up process. So I have to consider that. Okay, so now I'm going to roll the dice again. Looks like I got a four. So I'll go ahead and press play on exposure. Now exposure, not exactly my favorite one here. As you can see uh, with craps, there's basically a, a mathematical probability of rolling a seven or a six. And they're the highest because of you have two dice. The lower the numbers and the higher the numbers, the less probability. So I tried to put adjustment layers that you don't use quite as much on those lower spectrums and adjustment layers that you use quite more in the center. But exposure, you know, we don't really use exposure much here. So I'm just actually going to make this darker. And I might use this as an opportunity to make that a vignette. So I'll press B for my brush tool. And then I'll just brush around here to kind of make a vignette with a brush. Okay, that looks good. Oh, yeah, draw the eye right in there. So I'm basically vignetting out and around the darkness of that area right there. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um, again, we can probably drop that opacity a little bit, but I don't want to roll the dice until I've got this really nicely dialed in. I'm not going to take this too far because I, who knows what I'm going to get next. Okay, so I'm going to roll. I've got another four. Great. More exposure. So I'm going to press play on that. I'm going to see what I can do with this if I brighten this up. So I'm going to brighten this up because um, I want more of the eye to be drawn around here. Uh, but I don't like how it's blowing up my highlights. So I'm going to change that to one of my favorite new blend modes, Linear Light. And Linear Light is controlled by fill. So I'm going to drop that fill. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. I can even bring that up a little bit more if I want to. A little bit brighter there. I'm going to double click this. And I'm going to make sure that it can't affect my highlights too much to over brighten them and it can't affect my midtones too much or my darks so it's really just going to be affecting the midtones and not the dark areas or the brightest bright areas i'll press ok so look at that as before and after on that i might drop that opacity down a little bit too basically what i did was i used that as a way to draw the eye right here to the center so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this mask and i'm going to brush black away right here. So I basically am drawing the eye right to that rock using exposure. So, you know, again, just trying to do things globally here is not going to work. It's going to challenge you to have to do things that are outside the box for you. Let me alter option click on this. Um, I got it slightly feathered. I need more feather here. Okay, so I'm going to brush this out a little bit more. Now, one of, one of the things I do know it's going to happen here because I, I, I made the game is I'm going to, at the very end of this, get an opportunity to be able to change certain things, uh, whether that's a mask or something else based on the dice roll. So that's with our last one. Again, we're doing seven rounds here. So here we go. Round number four. I got an eight and an eight is the hue saturation adjustment layer. Press play. What I would give for a curve right now. So I'm going to press the target adjustment tool. I'm going to click on, let's say my reds here. I bring up the saturation a little bit more in those reds. And as I bring up the saturation in those reds, I'm also going to make them darker. And that's going to round them off a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm going to click on the greens or the yellows here. I'm actually going to go into my greens because I want the green back there to be a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to bring up the green to make them a little bit more vibrant back there. But then round them off a little bit with a little bit of darkness. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, let me click on another color here. It's going to be my reds. I, don't, I just did red. Let's let's do yellow. Make my yellow a little bit more vibrant. Okay. And then darken that down a little bit. There's a guy in the background there. A little punk. <laughs> it's actually Matt Kluskowski. We went on a trip together and uh, he was in my shot. Yeah, it's okay. I'll get him out of there later. So now I'm going to go ahead and roll again. Uh, I might drop the opacity a little bit on this because, again, it is a build-up process. I'm going to roll again. And it looks like I got another four. Gosh, come on. Do not like that stupid exposure. But you know what? It's a thing. That's part of craps. It's all random. It's a crap shoot, right? Um, let's see what happens here if I, I want to try and shape up my midtones a little bit. So to shape up my midtones, I'm going to double click this and get myself set up with blend if. So I'm going to do this. OK, 
okay? And then do this, okay? So basically, blend if right there is basically saying, hey, you only are gonna be able to target your midtones here. I can tell that by putting a color overlay on here, and that's gonna be my midtones. I'm gonna really spread that pretty far. Um, like that, okay, and then I'll turn that color overlay off. Press OK, and then let's see what happens here with those midtones. Let's darken down those midtones a little bit, give them a little bit of shape. And let's look at the offset here, and then gamma correction. This is something I've actually never done before, <laughs> using exposure on the midtones like that. That's actually look at that. That's pretty impressive. You see, I'm even learning something right now. I just did this on the fly as I'm teaching this because, you know, it's a crapshoot. You never know what you're gonna get. I think that looks pretty good. It took those midtones and really tightened them up a little bit. That's something I'm gonna have to remember for the future. You probably learned something new here too. Cool. All right, let's do another roll. Now this might be our last roll. So an eight. So what is an eight? Eight is hue saturation adjustment layer. Press play. So I'm gonna set this HSL. This is what I'm gonna do with this one though. I'm gonna use my color for tones. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a luminosity blend mode. Now I did not practice any of this. This is all random. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the, uh, let's look at the reds. Okay, so basically I set this up for luminosity. So I'm using my red color here to basically shape the tones of those colored areas. Uh, so it's not actually modifying the color itself really, because what the luminosity blend mode does, it says, okay, only pay attention to the tonal quality with this slider. So it's not allowing the color portion of that slider to come through. So let's see here shape up those a little bit more i'll bring that out brighten it up a little bit let's look at the greens tonal quality of the green there you see that's only making them brighter or darker here um oh look at that when i make those greens a little bit darker there that's nice that's very nice let's see what happens with this color back here that's the blue and now we can shape up the tone of the color blue here really make that really dark and stand out or brighten it up a little bit i think it looks a little bit better when it's brightened up a little bit you see how we're using that that hsl as a as a tonal property now and not as a color property. And that looks pretty good. So the last roll, so I said I'm gonna do seven rounds here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the seventh round. Um, I rolled a seven, no, a six. I rolled a six. So with a six, um, I can do six total adjustments now. So on the last round, and this is in the rules, uh, you can go through all of your layers and make adjustments, whether that's making a different mask um, or just assessing your overall um, shape of your image here. Every slight modification you do is gonna be a change though. So let's say I go to this exposure layer because I wanna fix the mask on here, as I said I was going to, because I didn't use the right brush. If I press Alt or Option, I look at this, it's very hard edged. I want it to be a little bit softer that and shape it a little bit more. So if I click on this mask, I'm going to uh, brush with the color white to bring it out more around here like this, okay? And that looks pretty good. Now, one of the things that I usually do with a vignette that I didn't do with this one is, is I want it to basically protect the highlight areas and only do it to the darkest dark areas. So the mask correction that I just did, that's one significant change. I get a total of six. So I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna go into blend if and I'm gonna say, okay, don't target my highlight areas here, okay? So now my highlight areas are not gonna get hit by that change there. Okay. So that's change number two. I'm going to turn the eyeball off on this. It's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to drop the opacity here. That's change number three. So of my changes that I've done here of the six possible changes that I can do, I've done three on just that exposure layer here. Now, if you want to keep track of that, you could double click this and just rename it three CH for three changes. That way I know I've got three more. So let's look at this exposure here. This one, I might actually bring up, make it a little bit brighter to draw the attention into there a little bit more. So that's one change. Okay. Um, it's the linear light blend mode. So let's see what happens when I increase the fill on this a little bit. Um, might make it a little bit more bit less okay uh, so that's two changes so now i've got two changes so i'm going to save the last one so it's two changes and see what happens with the next one so there's my hsl there's another exposure mm, you see this is hitting things a little bit i love what it's doing to those man i gotta remember that one <laughs> that was awesome that's a tutorial for another day um hsl on the okay here so this hsl is too much so i'm going to drop down the opacity of this a little bit okay and maybe a little bit more to 50%. So that's my third change. So, so we double click this. So I know that that's one CH for one change. So now I've got one change, two change, three changes, total of six changes. Let's see our overall before. 
Here's our overall before. Here's after the selective color. Here's after the exposure. Exposure two, this was for the darkest area here. Here was for the brighter area here. Here's for the HSL adjustment. Here's for the exposure for the midtones. And here's for the overall change in the tonal quality of the color at the very end. Now, you can see that the, the final product is actually pretty good, but I was forced to do things that were outside the box and get myself thinking differently about this photo because I'm using adjustment layers that I don't normally use. That exposure adjustment layer targeting only the midtones was really cool. I've never even thought of doing something like that before. And that all got sparked up here because I had to step outside the box and try something new. I think for the last and final thing, what I would do here is actually zoom into the back and look at good old Matt Klaskowski taking a look at those beautiful flowers. And I'll probably clone him out real quick. Sorry, Matt. Love you, buddy. You got to go, though. All right. No more Matt. <laughs> so... If you're interested in playing Photoshop craps, in the card above, you will get the actions and also the rules and guides on how to play. Um, really simple, really easy, okay? Now, the more challenging version is actually a lot of fun where each round does something different. Like when you roll, if it's odd or even, you can pick any odd or any even adjustment layer. There's also a roll where when you roll it, you have to uh, delete that layer and maybe never use that one. It's, it's actually kind of fun when you play it with, it's actually pretty fun when you play it in the more advanced way, but play it the basic way a couple times, get your gears turned a little bit here. What this will help you do is it'll help you experiment with adjustment layers you've never used. It'll help you experiment with blend modes, opacity, fill, blend if, masking. It really challenges you to think outside the box and do something that you're not routinely used to doing with your photographs. I found myself playing this a lot while we are in our stay at home order here during the coronavirus thing. I thought maybe this would be a good game to pass on to you and see if it's something that you'd like to play to challenge yourself or challenge a friend of yours. Again, my name is Blake Grutus here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment on it, share it with a friend and play it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I promise you it's going to spark up some new things in your workflow that you're not normally used to doing. The download is going to be in the description below and also in the card above. Remember to have fun with it, have a great time, and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. So for many of you, Photoshop might be a crapshoot anyway. <laughs> oh, that's terrible.